my name's Aiden. I'm here to do a behind the bumper on your IO regional host, 525 Sport Dogs and their robot Guppy with their interesting coral guiding method and their dropout funnel. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Kettering University's cutting edge programs and their experiential co-op model seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds, offering hands-on, feature-focused learning that empowers students to pursue new ideas and inspires other institutions to follow their lead. Don't just be ahead of the curve, create the curve. Get more information at kettering.edu slash first. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or a $2,000 individual prize when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details. All right, so one of our biggest priorities this year was a wide intake. So we went nearly full width with our funnel uh, it's at a 30 degree angle, which we found was very good to get the coral through the robot. We made it out of HDPE. Uh, initially it was polycarb. We moved to HDPE as a way to remove some weight and it still works out fantastically for us. So now I can feed it in. Uh, another priority was just being able to have it at any orientation, not just straight on. All right, we're going to take it away to Ryan to talk about the elevator. So we haven't we haven't done a lot of elevators in the past, so we wanted to go for simplicity, but also effectiveness for the game. And so what we did for the simplicity side of it was we decided to go with a modified West Coast Products kit elevator and to with all three stages to reach all the way to L4 without the need for an extra pivot on the end of the elevator. And then in order to be effective in the game, we calculated what it would take to get a relatively heavy end effector, like two to three pounds up to L4 in the least amount of time possible. And so we decided to go with a two vortexes on a five to one uh, gear ratio that can send this elevator up in about around a half a second. Go ahead and run it. All right, on to K to talk about the end effectors of this bot. Yeah, so with our end effector, we wanted to be able to spit the coral out as fast as possible and while saving weight while doing that. We actually use these TPU printed wheels. They're soft and we really wanted to get that full, almost full circumference squish on the coral so you could really hold it well. Um, the other thing we did, we had troubles at our first regional with belt slipping. So we, the simple fix was just adding bigger belts with more teeth and then stronger grip on it. We haven't had problems since. These are driven by two Neos uh, with a 20 to 1 gear ratio on it. That helps us with our algae uh, manipulator. This algae is run by a bevel gear on top of only one of the uh, four things on the end effector. And it just simply spins. You can run it. Yeah, it just spins and the coral will just slide right or the algae will slide right out after that. The other thing we noticed during our first regional is we were a little slow lining up because we had to always adjust with the depth perception of whether the coral is over or not. So we actually added this little stick. So when we're up at the L4 height, we can actually see if it's touching the branch or not. And then we're ready to place. All right, we're going to go back to Keegan to talk about their climbing ability. Yeah, for our climb, uh, we did something a little unique. When we did our calculations with our elevator, we figured out that it was able to lift 370 pounds at max torque. So we knew that we could use our elevator and piggyback off of that for our deep climb. Uh, so our question was how to get the deep climb off of the back of the elevator. And what we concluded at was our dropping funnel. So if we want to run that. So the funnel has a door lock actuator that pulls a pin that runs between the two sides of the funnel. And then our foot here raises up so that the cage can slide over the back of the robot over our battery cage. And then once it's in position, we have our guides that have magnets on them that will grab onto the bars of the cage. And then we slam the elevator down and we have three little fingers here 
that are have torsional springs on them. So once we push down the cage, they'll slide out of the way. And then once it's far enough down, they'll lock back up and hold us up. All right, we're gonna go to Eden and Cedric to talk about some of the really cool programming things that this bot has to offer. Yeah, so one thing that we really wanted to focus on within programming this year was maximizing efficiency and speed within everything that we did. So one thing that we implemented this year within our vision subsystem was something called auto align. Essentially, uh, we ran a lot of iterations to figure out what would maximize our ability to align to the reef. And we concluded that we wanted to take our current pose of our robot um, on the field and compare it to the position of the April tag and essentially do some math to find the line that best fits um, and so that we can drive that line to align to the reef perfectly. And um, one thing that uh, we are, our driver does to do that alignment is we are, um, he clicks each, um, every button, which aligns us to a certain branch. So rather than having to spend the time translation, transitioning between each spot, he pushes that button and we're there and we can place pretty easily. And that stick um, helps us to make sure we're aligned and that we can visually see it pretty easily. Okay, so something else that we really wanted to focus on this year was making the lives of our drive team as easy as possible and reducing as much human error as we could. So with that, we did a lot of automation and we use these things called composite commands to kind of string many commands within different subsystems together. So for example, when we intake, our elevator goes down to stow to ensure that we aren't intaking at a higher position. And then we run the intake. And then once we basically take the coral in and then we have some light sensors, that detect if the coral is in the position we want, and then we index it a little bit back so we have a better grip. All of that is done with the push of one singular button. And we have a lot of these lots of commands alerted through our command scheme in order to basically make our driver's lives as easy as possible. Additionally, we have some sort of kind of fail safes um, for making sure that our drivers don't accidentally push buttons that we don't want happening. A big example of this is the funnel for hanging. Um, because once we drop our funnel, we can't intake coral anymore. We wanted to make sure that it wasn't accidentally bumped during the middle of a match, which would prevent us from scoring for the rest of the match. So what we did was we bound it to two buttons, one on each of the driver and operator consoles. And basically what happens is they both need to be pressed at the exact same time in order for the funnel to drop. So we ensure that we have kind of that double check to make sure we really do want to hang. As well as um, our command to actually fully hang, we basically just drive the LRA down at a certain power. We don't want that happening in the middle of the match, so we check to make sure the funnel has been dropped before enabling that command. Additionally, a lot of the automation we do is in the code base as well. So what we have is for our dashboard, we use something called Elastic. And for our autonomous selector, what we're able to do is we have these, um, these choices. So we can add a delay to our auto, depending on the amount of seconds we have. We have a start position, a number of coral, and then we have an alerts box for basically if we, that tells us also if we haven't selected an auto as well as other things throughout the match. The big thing is that we have a method within our code that basically takes the position we have as well as the number of coral we have and basically selects what autonomous we have. And we have, um, we use Choreo for our autonomous um, path generation. It helps us generate our paths and also follow our trajectories. But a neat feature of Choreo is that you're able to split the paths at certain points. So basically we have a method that takes the amount of coral that we have and using that it builds up how many splits we want to run. And it, we use the same path for pretty much all of our, um, for each of our sides. For example, right, it only has one path, but we take a certain amount of splits depending on how many coral we want to try to score. And I think this is really cool, as well as we take the, the auto that we actually get and we actually display it on this full field so we know what auto we're selecting and can confirm that we have what we want to do before the match, just to add that layer of checking for the drivers to make sure we always know what we're running during autonomous. Yeah, one other thing that we really tried to focus on within making our lives and our drivers' lives easier um, was uh, essentially allowing us to adjust our constants in all of our values with the click of a button. So um, this year we implemented this programmer's tab within our dashboard. Essentially, it displays a ton of data for um, our programmers to see certain things. So like, let's say that we want to tune our hang height, so we want to increase that. Rather than having to go to our constants and redeploying code and everything like that, we can directly change the value within our um, dashboard and that'll automatically adjust 
and allow us to um, change that without uh, a lot of time and iterations and everything like that. So essentially, we really focused on being able to access data, simplicity, and accessibility. This has been Behind the Bumpers with 5 to 5 Sword Dog and their bot Guppy. I wish you guys luck with the rest of the event. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or a $2,000 individual prize when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free, scan the QR code, or go to altair.com contest for further details. Kettering University's cutting-edge programs and their experiential co-op model seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds, offering hands-on, feature-focused learning that empowers students to pursue new ideas and inspires other institutions to follow their lead. Don't just be ahead of the curve, create the curve. Get more information at kettering.edu first.